there's always been a thread of, of, of worship in our shows and, and certainly on our albums. And, uh, you know, probably what I would call um, music directed directly at God. Some people might call that vertical music, but uh, at least a, a couple of those songs on, on each of our records. So we've had fans who have kind of wanted to see a whole album more dedicated towards that sort of thing. So that's kind of where the idea came from. We thought we'd give uh, our fans something like that, and that's where their first offerings came from. So really it was a fan piece. It wasn't expected to, to do a whole lot, you know, uh, but instead it kind of surprised us, and it's been our bestseller. Well, I know there's been kind of a, a resurgence lately of praise music on a lot of different artists, and uh, why do you think there's been kind of a resurgence lately of uh, praise music? Well, honestly, I... I you know, without trying to sound too much in the church, I think it's a genuine move of God. You know, it's, it's kind of something that only God could do. It's it's not really a fad thing, um, like a lot of people would think it might be, where someone jumped on board or whatever. I think this generation and, and people's hearts are, are really being drawn towards true worship. It's, it's kind of, so to speak, I guess, made a, when, he, when I say a resurgence, it's not stylistically, but from a, a, you know, a spiritual standpoint, if you will, it's kind of made a, that type of music, worship music, has, has made a comeback. Well, what are your, some of your favorite praise songs? Some of my favorite praise songs, uh -huh. as far as stock praise songs or third day songs? Um, I guess either one. Okay. Uh, I, let me think. As far as stock praise songs, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of some of the ones that we actually even did this past Sunday. Um, oh, I'm trying to think of some that would might come to mind that people wouldn't know. Um you know, for me, honestly, as far as as far as worship songs are concerned, uh, and that's this is kind of the reason why uh, this is our theory within Third Day also. But we we like to do things that aren't what everybody else is doing. So that's kind of why we've written our own stuff. For me, I'm I'm more of a hymn kind of a guy. So we've done some of that ourselves uh, as far as trying to write hymn like songs. I know Mark Lee uh, coming from the Methodist Church. We come up from all different church backgrounds, but he ended up uh, writing a song on our last offerings album. Uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank of what it's called, uh, but we, we kind of give it a Celtic feel and has a um, very hymn-like quality. So, uh, you know, I, I'm into a lot of the, the traditional hymns mainly, but uh, a lot of the, the new worship music I like, um, and, um, you know, so. so. I know you say that, you know, you try and do uh, kind of your own thing there, but what are uh, some bands or maybe artists that kind of inspired you, uh, both when you were first starting out, I guess, and still today, both musically and lyrically? Um, well, Rich Mullins is someone who we've really been inspired by as as young artists. He didn't really have a problem writing about his relationship with God, and he was able to create pictures, word pictures that were, were very powerful. So there are a lot of great bands out there that we, we really enjoy. Some of them may not be considered, you know, traditional worship, so to speak. I like what uh, a group called Switchfoot does. There's a, a group called Sixpence, None the Richer, that does some very cool stuff. I like artists who try to write mainly their own worship songs, because, you know, it's coming from the heart. It's coming really from a, a true perspective of, of, of them worshiping God. Well, I, I've heard uh, some bands and things say that uh, Third Day is a band that inspires them. In fact, I actually uh, ran into a high school student the other day. He actually said that uh, when I mentioned I was going to be interviewing you, he actually said that uh, you were the one that inspired him to start playing the guitar. So a uh, pretty good compliment there. Hmm. Um, uh, when you started out as a musician, uh, do you have any idea that you might someday be able to reach as many people as you have with your music and your ministry? Well, I, that's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of a loaded question, so to speak. <laughs> uh, There's it, a hard way to answer that you know, without sounding vain, but when you dream to be in a band, a, a career band, so to speak, you know, you're dreaming and, and you hope one day that you'll get to do that. Honestly, to, to keep that dream alive, you have, to, you have to feel that way. You have to be confident that some way that can happen so yes uh, you know deep down in there was the hope that someday i would be you know in a national touring band and, and playing music you know hopefully that had some longevity that uh, would last but you know you never know what's going to happen that's one of those things where you just kind of <laughs> kind of rely on god but um you know yeah i've always always had dreamed of being able to do this and 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 do this uh you know do it for a living and and be able to travel uh you know as a career and and i'm glad it worked out that way really shows the power of God working through people then, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Um, well, you're going to be performing at uh, the Sunshine Festival in Wilmer, Minnesota in July. Um, I saw you there a few years ago after the release of Conspiracy Number no. 5. Um, how is your show now with offerings different than it was back then? 
Well, let's see. You haven't seen us in a long time. <laughs> that, <laughs> no, it's been a while. Conspiracy <laughs> was way back when, about five years ago. Um, honestly, nothing has, has necessarily changed. I mean, if you saw Conspiracy, you know that was probably our. It was an aggressive album in a in a dark way. We, I think we write, you know, rock and albums in, in in different ways. Sometimes more Americana. Some of them have taken a more of a pop nature, but definitely been rock and 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 Conspiracy was was kind of a rock alternative album in an aggressive way. Um, honestly, our shows haven't, when I say they, they haven't changed, the, the concept of our show hasn't changed, and that is to, uh, you know, really to take people somewhere through our music. That's a roller coaster ride that, that music does. You have to build a show that way. And we've always had an energetic rock and show. Um, but we've always been pretty forthright with uh, where we're coming from, and, and so we've we've taken time to, to really share our hearts. As far as the, the worship aspect, uh, because of Offerings 2 and because of the Offerings album, people will assume that, you know, those who go to a, a church service would assume that's probably what they're going to get. And in some respects, uh, those elements of worship might be there, but worship is, is not really a style. It, it's more of a, you know, it's, it's a way of, of your heart where your heart's at and, and, you know, how you are with God and, and what, how you're dedicating whatever you're doing at the time to, to God. I think a lot of people think that, you know, worship has to be either, you know, an acoustic guitar and, and a vocal or, you know, so people just have certain ideas about what worship should be and, and that goes with any generation. I mean, that goes even back as far as you want to imagine. If you ask your parents what they think worship sounds like or is like, they'll, they'll give you a different story. But for us, uh, you know, third day worship's a little bit different. It's our uh, it's our take on it, but uh, it's certainly, it's a night of uh, energy and, and rock and roll. So. Okay, and I love the album, by the way, as well. I've uh, had a chance to listen to it many times, <laughs> and I, I fell in love with it. But uh, now I know uh, this is a question I have to ask you. I know you're not making music to win awards, but what was it like to win a Grammy Award? Uh, it was it was really neat. Honestly, we've we've uh, it was our fourth Grammy that we've been nominated for, and we've been honored every time. But we've really wanted to bring one home, to be honest. I mean, and uh, to finally win one is uh, it's very exciting for us. It's a tip of the hat from the voting members of NARIS, you know, uh, National Arts and Recording. It really feels good to us because we we feel like you know it's kind of a, a nod to to the work that we've put into it over these ten years. You're right, we don't do this for awards, but uh, being honored uh, it, it does. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you're doing something right. And, uh, you know, for us, that was coming from our peers who make music that inspires us, you know, and that motivates us and moves us. So to be honored amongst our peers is, is very encouraging. All right, Brad. Well, uh, thanks a lot for being with us today. And I also uh, just I look forward to seeing you at Sunshine this year. Hopefully I can make it up there. So Thanks, Wes. Come up and see us. We look forward to it. All right.